The rest of the course is now going to be devoted mostly to series. While sequences and series, series are defined in terms of sequences, and so we need to start with sequences. And sequences are pretty much what you think it is intuitively. In other words, it's uh, at least for a sequence of numbers, uh, it's uh, just a list of numbers where the order matters. Um, think of, for instance, the decimal expansion of pi. So it starts with 3.14 and then it keeps going. So you have infinitely many terms. And of course, um, what matters in this sequence is the order because you want to know in what position is each, is each digit. So that defines a sequence where the first term is 3, the second term is 1, the third term is 4, the fourth term is 1, and you can keep going this way and you have infinitely many terms in your sequence. So how do we formalize this? We're going to so we're going to define a sequence of real numbers as a real valued function defined on the natural numbers. So what I have written symbolically S from N to R, of course this uh, weird looking N stands for the set of natural numbers and the weird looking R stands for the set of real numbers. So this is a function from the natural numbers to the real numbers. And we identify the sequence with the infinite ordered list of its values. Well, it's potentially infinite. Uh, so what matters here is the order, and the order is implicit uh, when we look at just the range of the function, because um, S is a function from the natural number to the real numbers, and there is a natural order on the natural numbers, which is transported on the images. Uh, namely, the first term in the sequence is the image of 1, the second term in the sequence is the image of 2, and so on. So what matters about what we can completely determine the function by just looking at the images, s of 1, s of 2, and so on. So this is the first term, the second term, and the nth term. So very often when we talk about sequences, uh, we are going to take a variable that is a natural number, n or k or i, uh, and that we're going to use this uh, variable as a generic uh, way of denoting the place in the sequence. So here it's the nth term, where n is some variable to that uh, can be attributed different values. So one notation that is more compact than what we have here, just listing s of 1, s of 2, and so on, s of n, and then say we continue with uh, dot dot dot, is to um, write generically s of n between parentheses, between braces, and uh, indicate the range of values that n takes. It starts from 1 and goes to infinity. Now, to save space a little bit, instead of writing s of n for the image of n, we're going to write s indexed by n. So the first term is now s1, s indexed by 1, which is the same as the image of 1 under the function s. s indexed by 2 is the same as the image of 2 under the function s, and so on. And s indexed by n will be the generic term, the nth term in the sequence. So now in this notation, we have s indexed by n. So n is the uh, index that is going to tell us the place in the sequence. And we have to specify uh, the range of integer values that n takes. So here it starts at 1, and it goes on to infinity. So we have to specify where it starts and where it goes. So there are various ways to define a sequence. One is to give an explicit formula. Um, for instance, we can look at the sequence n plus 1 over n squared plus 2, where n starts at 1 and um, takes all natural values. And in that case, if you think of what are the values um, in the list in the sequence, right? the first term is when n is 1. If you plug n equal 1 in this explicit formula, you get 1 plus 1 at the top and 1 squared plus 2 at the bottom, so you get 2 thirds. 
when n is 2, you get 2 plus 1, um, 3, and at the bottom you get 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6, so you get 3 6, that's 1 half. That's your second term. When n is 3, you get 3 plus 1 4 at the top, and then uh, 3 squared is 9 plus 2 11 at the bottom, so you get 4 11s, and you keep going this way. So you get the picture. When the sequence is given by an explicit formula this way, then it's easy to calculate any term in the sequence. For instance, I could ask, okay, what is the um, 1000 term? Why well, I'll plug n equal 1000 in my explicit formula. I get 1001 at the top. I get 1000 square, which is a million, plus 2 at the bottom. So I have a million and 2 at the bottom. And that's uh, the value of the term number 1000 in my sequence. Another example where it's a uh, sequence given by an explicit formula, I could take um, the square root of n squared minus 9, where n starts at 3. Here you see that um, we, if we're looking at real numbers, I cannot take n equal 1, for instance, because I would have the square root of a negative number. But you see that uh, it's not necessary that a sequence starts with n equal 1. It could start with uh, a different value, a different value of n, but then it goes on. Uh, for all the values of n that are greater than this initial value. An alternative way to denote this sequence is uh, square root of n square minus 9 between braces, where n is greater or equal to 3. And it's impl implicit here that n takes all the uh, natural number values greater or equal to 3. So if you want to write out the first few terms, when n is 3, you get uh, 3 squared minus 9, so that's 0, square root of 0 is 0, so 0 is the first term. The next term in the sequence corresponds to n equal 4, then you get n squared is 16, uh, minus 9, 7, so you get square root of 7. When n equal 5, you get 25 minus 9 is 16, square root of 16 is 4, and you keep going this way. Another way to give uh, to define a sequence is to give the first few terms with uh, the implicit understanding that there is a clear pattern that you may make explicit. So for instance, if I give you the uh, first few terms of a sequence by 1, 3, 5, 7, well, you would guess that the next term is 9 and then 11 and then 13 and so on. So in other words, that you, you are looking at um, the consecutive odd numbers. And then you can write it as an explicit formula, uh, for instance, by looking at the sequence 2n minus 1 when n ranges from 1 to infinity. You see that when n is 1, you get 1. When n is 2, you get 4 minus 1, 3. When n is 3, you get 6 minus 1, 5, and so on. Another way to define a sequence would be um, with a definition of what the nth term is without giving it an explicit value. For instance, you could consider the sequence uh, Pn, where the nth term is um, the world population n years from today. That is something that makes sense to consider, but where we um, don't necessarily know what the explicit numerical value of Pn is. Another way to define a sequence that is uh, somewhat different is by induction. And when we define by induction, we give uh, either the first or the first few terms, and then a way to calculate the um, terms that come afterwards. So in this case, I give the first term in the sequence, a1 is 1. And then for all natural number n, I define the term a n plus 1 as 1 over 1 plus a n. So I have the first term, and then for any n, I define the next term in terms of the preceding one. So what does that mean? I know a1. What if I want a2? Well, to calculate a2, I can apply the formula, the um, induction formula, a n plus 1 equal 1 over 1 plus a n, for n equal 1. A2 is A indexed by 1 plus 1. So that's when N is 1 in my formula. And so that's 1 over 1 plus A1 because N is 1.
but I know a1, so I can plug in its value, and I get one half for a2. Once I have a2, I can calculate a3, because now a3 can be obtained with the formula an plus 1 is 1 over 1 plus an, when n is 2. Right, so I get 1 over 1 plus a2, and I have already calculate, calculated a2, a2 was 1 half, and so at the bottom I have 1 plus 1 half, uh, which is 3 half, and then I take the reciprocal of that, which is 2 thirds, so that's a3. Once I have a3, I can calculate a4. Again, the formula tells me if I have one term, I can calculate the next by taking uh, 1 plus a term I have, take the reciprocal, and that's the next term. So I take 1 plus a3, that's 1 plus 2 thirds, uh, that's um, 5 thirds, and then I take the reciprocal, that's 3 fifths. Now you see that when a sequence is defined by induction this way, I can keep going and keep calculating um, one term after another. But if I want a large term, then I need to calculate explicitly all of the preceding term before I can calculate A indexed by 1000. So it's a lot more work that in the case where I have an explicit formula where I can just plug n equal 1000 in a formula and get my value. Here this is something that uh, would require a lot of time to do by hand. Of course you don't need to do it by hand, you can implement um, an algorithm to have a calculator calculate that. Or you can try to study this uh, sequence to find an explicit formula from the induction formula. At any rate, you see that this is a well-defined sequence where um, giving the first term and a way to get the next term from the preceding one uh, gives you a way to calculate, uh, gives you a, a well-defined sequence where you have an infinite sequence of terms. Another example uh, that is defined by the first two terms and then giving one term in terms of the preceding two is... Um, given here, the first two terms are 1, and then to get one term, given two preceding ones, I add the two preceding ones and I get the new term. Uh, this is the uh, so-called Fibonacci numbers. So I have the first two terms and then n plus 2, so that means um, if I know a n and a n plus 1, I can calculate a n plus 2. In other words, if for instance I know a1 and a2, I can calculate a3, Right? That's the case where n is 1. And I calculate it in terms of the preceding 2. So for instance, um, a1 and a2 are 1, that's the first two terms, and the third term is the sum of the preceding 2, so this is 1 plus 1, 2. The fourth term is the sum of the preceding 2, so that's 2 plus 1, 3. The fifth term is the sum of the preceding 2, that's 3 plus 2, 5, and so on. 